Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's grateful Deborah Evans. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. To you too. Happy Friday, this is Sister Yvonne. To all, have a blessed Friday. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. It's sunshine. Happy blessed Friday. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Happy Friday. God bless everyone on the call. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. I heard another brother on, on the line. Good morning, God morning, great morning. This is Reverend E. K. Dawson. Welcome to Declaring Victory. Who's going to help us declare victory today? <laughs> God is love. God is great. God is good. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast unto the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the class. Amen. Happy Friday, brother. Happy Friday. Yes. Good morning. Declare victory. Have a victorious weekend. Good morning, EK. This is Miss B. Have an awesome day. And you do the very same. Hey, good morning, Rebby Rev. Rev Dolphin. It's Demetriana. Hey. Dee Felder from the Rich. Okay, I mean, I'll be so hood this morning. But I got a little uh, hood in me because I woke up this morning with a praise on my heart. Good morning. Love you, bro. Love you as well. Good morning. <laughs> Come on in here. Come on in here, declaring victory family. Amen. It's truly, truly, truly is the day that he made it. He designed it. He handmade it for you. Amen. And that's the reason to give him glory, the reason to give him honor, the reason to give him praise. He is praise. He is honor. He is glory. Amen. Welcome to Declaring Victory. Anybody on the line? Amen, amen, amen. Hey, good morning. This is Marv coming in on this uh, wonderful Friday. God bless you this morning. Okay, no worries. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Present and grateful. Good morning. It's Krishanda. God bless you and happy Friday, everyone. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Yes, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Amen. Who came to bless the Lord today? 
Amen. Anybody else join the line? It's Reverend E.K. Dawson. And I want to welcome you to Declaring Victory. Hey, good morning, Petra. If we could, um, I have a prayer request for a young man named Michael. He had a sinus infection and the fluid dripped down to his brain. And now they have to do surgery. So if we could lift uh, Michael up in prayer, I'd appreciate it. Amen. God is truly in control. Amen. Good morning. This is Kat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to hear your voice. Welcome to Declaring Victory. Happy Favorite Friday. It's our men's day. We're celebrating the brothers today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well. Oh, and I have another one. I'm sorry. And it's a toddler. His name is Delon. He has to have surgery on his esophagus. He's too okay, his name is what? If we could pray for um, this toddler named Delon. 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 Uh-huh. Delon. He has to have surgery on his esophagus. So if we could okay. call out his name also. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Okay, well, we can go ahead and get started. It's okay. It's time to get started. And before we move forward, we're going to ask anybody to put your phones on uh, mute so that we can go ahead and proceed. Good morning. God morning. Great morning. My name is Reverend E.K. Dawson, and I'm your host. I want to thank you for joining us here on Declaring Victory. Amen. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Uh, to be uh, uh, continue to join us in the rest of the month in June, where our theme is entitled Wisdom Proverbs. Uh, each uh, declare will focus on how wisdom can be obtained and executed from God and utilized throughout your entire life. Uh, be sure to invite a friend so that they may be blessed, too. That's right. Invite a friend so that they may be blessed also. Amen? Uh, and so uh, we have no requests on the app, but the order of the call is prayer and corporate praise uh, by myself. Um, and the declaration will be brought by Mar. Uh, and then we'll go right into closing comments hosted by the declarer. Amen. That's right. Prayer and corporate praise uh, brought by uh, Reverend E.K. Dawson and the declaration by Brother Mar. And then we'll go right into closing comments hosted by the declarer. The scripture for today is Proverbs. Blessed be those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing of his holy word. And at this time, we're going to ask you again to put your phone on mute until instructed to come off of mute. And now we'll begin to give God praise through prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Excuse me. As my grandfather would say, it's time to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our problems. We'll hear even our faintest cry, and we will answer. He will answer by and by. Amen. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. My sinus this morning. Father, we thank you for this day and this morning. We give you praise and we give you honor. We give you glory. Father, we bless your name. Uh, we have a mind to praise you, a mind to worship you. Father, we have a mind to give your name glory. We thank you for the victory that exists in our lives. We thank you for all that you do, and we give you glory and praise, Lord. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. 
we give you honor. And we truly give you glory. Thank you, Lord God, that you touched us early this morning uh, with the finger of love and then woke us up into a brand new day, a day we've not seen before, Lord God. And we're excited about our purpose. We're excited about our callings. We're excited about our gifts that we go into this brand new day that we've not seen before, Lord God. Uh, asking you, what can we do, Lord God, to help enhance the kingdom? What can we do, Father God, to be a blessing to somebody? What can we do, Father God, uh, to, to help and shine a light onto who you are and introduce somebody to Jesus, Lord, which is one of our calls? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Father, we thank you so much uh, for jobs and roofs over our heads. We thank you so much, Lord God, for gas in our car and vehicles to drive. We thank you so much, Father, for a bus pass, for a clipper card, for a BART card, for the fare to get on the transportation or an Uber, a Lyft, uh, a ride share. We thank you, Father God, for whatever mode of transportation that you've provided, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for vision. We thank you for the things that we can see. And then we thank you for our faith that allows us to trust you for the things that we cannot see, that we walk not by uh, our sight, uh, but we walk by you, Lord God, trusting and depending on you. Thank you, Lord God, for this fabulous thing called faith uh, that exists in our lives, Father. Thank you that you, every day, we grow through life's experience and that we grow in our faith. That means we grow in you. And that's our ultimate goal, is that we grow in you, Father. Father, we ask now that you would bless every church door that's open, every pastor, every leader. Lord God, we ask you to bless the fivefold ministries of the church. Lord, all those churches that are open in your name and that worship you, Lord God, in spirit and in truth. Because that's what you say in your word that you're looking for, is those that would worship you, that they would worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, we thank you and we give you glory right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for those names that were called uh, of the young, two young men that had difficult situations. Uh, one is having an eye surgery uh, and one is having a brain surgery. One, uh, Lord, you know all the needs and all the names that are on our hearts that are called and that have not been called, Lord God, but those that are standing in the need. Uh, we ask you to continue to bless, heal in that case. In those cases, those two young men, be a deliverer, be a heart fixer, be a mind regulator, be a, a healer, Lord God, everything that they might need, Lord God. And know that we give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Lord God, for all that you do and continue to do and blessing us as your child. We thank you for your faithfulness unto us, Lord. Father, we now uh, ask for the entirety of the call the Declare Victory family, Lord, there's so many entities with inside of so many of your children, so many of your people, Lord God, continue to bless and keep hear us, Lord God, teach us to pray and go deeper in your word, Lord God, that we can be a blessing to our communities, Lord, that we would stay on the wall and stay on our knees and stay in our prayer closets, Lord God, and stay in our devotional time, Father, that we would be an impact, Lord God, and continue to be a light on a hill, Lord God so that the world would not die to darkness, Lord, that they would uh, uh, remain walking in the light, searching for the light, watching for, searching for you, Lord God, and your guidance and your love and your care. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for Sister Dion. We thank you for uh, the entire Declaring Victory family, all the staff that manages everything and that uh, schedules and so on and so forth. Bless them in a very special way. Uh, is our prayer, Lord God. And again, every request that was on the app or that was spoken and unspoken, Lord God, we know that we lay it before your feet and we know uh, that you will move even mountains, Lord God. Uh, thank you uh, because of your love. Thank you. God, as we prepare to take our phones off of mute and to make one sound and one sound in unity, go ahead, declaring victory. Take your phones off mute and let's go ahead and give God praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Take glory to you. Hallelujah. Let's go into corporate praise. Hallelujah. 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 H
Amen. And I hope I'm coming across a little clearer this morning, but I do have a little bit of a cold. Amen. Um, do you remember a time in your life when you may have considered yourself stupid? Wow. Somebody might say, wow, did you really say that? Amen. And I mean, really stupid. <laughs> I mean, like you can think back in time in your life when you know that you've done some things or you behave a certain way where you just wonder how you survive through it. I remember some years ago, um, I had a stepdad, and he and I was having a conversation about something. And in this conversation, I realized that both of us um, had the same knowledge about something. But what I wasn't aware of was the, how much insight and experience he had regarding the subject matter. And, and just like many folks, I resisted the instruction that he had to offer. Uh, Proverbs 12 and 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise one listens to, to advice. And at that time, I really didn't do it. Hey, man, I, I, I didn't really pay attention, and I, and I really didn't know how much I didn't know. Um, it was stupid of me um, not to listen to the more seasoned individual, the more experienced individual that was in my life at that season in time. Uh, much later in my life, I realized how wise he was, and, and I can truly say that the damage had already been done. Uh, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right to man, but it leads, the end thereof leads to destruction. And then you also have in Proverbs 12 and 21, whoever loves instruction, loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Um, so when you hear me say, you know, have you ever had a stupid moment in your life? It's not just Mars talking. I mean, this is the word thing, you know, that we all can have a sense of stupidity um, that shows up in our lives. And I, and I will tell you that that in this moment, you don't have to worry, worry about me continuing to use the word stupid, because I know we don't want to hear that. Uh, amen. So this is the sound, it may sound crazy or even harsh this morning, but but I wonder how many of us can really admit that we've had some stupid times, that we've been stupid in our lives, uh, and we've made some bad decisions. And even though we were given good instruction, wisdom teaches. Wisdom teaches if we let it. Even as adults, we need to let wisdom teach. Uh, we need to let it teach us in every area of our lives. Um, there's a story that many of us are familiar with, which comes from Moses and, and his father-in-law, Jethro. And this account in Moses' life deals with Jethro giving Moses instruction concerning the work that he was doing as a leader. Uh, Jethro's advice to Moses represents what we call, and many of us may know, as the Jethro principle for leaders. Um, this is to know that no leader is called or gifted to do everything. It is a wise leader who understands their limit. And as I talk about leaders today, I don't want anyone to, to fall off and think that I'm just talking about a certain group of people, but we are all ministers and leaders in our own way. We are all called to, to minister. We are all going to have the ability to lead in some capacity. So in spite of his position in Exodus uh, 18 and 24, it says, Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. A wise leader is open to advice and counsel. Even though the Lord had great honor, greatly honored Moses and had done wonders by his hand, the fact that he had been chosen to instruct others did not lead him to conclude that he himself needed no instruction. It is a wise man that knows his ability. Uh, uh, comes from being able to hear the instructions of those who are wiser than him. Jethro became Moses' spiritual mentor. Um, under, the, under him, Moses learned patience through caring for the sheep. And at Horeb, he learned the, the leadership principle of empowering assistance through delegating authority. This resulted in Moses also uh, receiving a life partner in Jethro. And if the truth is told, we all need some life partners with us. Uh, we all need someone that can share with us and that can pour into us and that can give us 
instructions to go forward and do the things that God has called us to do in our lifetime. And, and so when I look at this uh, principle, I look at the things that, that was taking place between Jethro and Moses, I see five things that we can learn from this partnership. And I promise you, it won't be long. Amen. One of the things that I see is that we must remember, first of all, that everything is not about us. Um, it's not about us. Uh, Moses had become the center of attention in the Israelite camp, hearing all the cases and problems of the people from morning to evening. Um, and this is what was taking place in his life at the time. And Jethro observed what was taking place with Moses. And he asked the question, what are you doing? Um, in other words, he asked him, why are you making yourself the center around which everything has re revolved? Moses' response is something that many of us, and paraphrasing it today, many of us and many leaders would say, the people expect me to have all the answers. Um, they expect me to do it. You see, Jethro holds no punches. Um, he tells Moses that this is not a good thing. You cannot lead in this manner where it's all about you. Leadership should, should never be all about one person. And what happens when the person is gone? <laughs> um, everything falls apart. Jethro's advice to Moses is to quit making it about yourself. I remember many years ago, um, I had a supervisor that asked me to do something one evening um, before I went home. And, um, and he said, you know, this week, Marv, I just want you to make sure that you lock up um, all of the uh, laundry rooms uh, when I was working in uh, Kennedy Manor at the time in Richmond. And, and so he said, well, when, before you go home, I just need you to lock up everything. And I remember this one particular evening um, that I left and, and I wasn't able to get to one of the restrooms and, and, and not one, one of the laundry rooms and, um, and I left it open. And so I got chastised the next day. And uh, he said something uh, that really kind of stuck out with me from that day forward. Uh, he said, Marv, listen, you know, when I asked you to make sure that everything was taken care of, I wasn't asking you to make sure that you did it personally. I just wanted you to make sure that it got done. And it's and it just one of those things that just rung with me ever since. Sometimes, you know, the responsibility is not just about us doing it personally, but sometimes the responsibility is just making sure that it gets done. Amen. So it's not about us. Amen. And so the next thing that I see is that, you know, Jethro tells Moses that he needs to learn how to communicate with the people, teach them the statutes and, and the instructions that, that, and make it known to them the way that they are to go and the things that they are to do. And I believe Jethro at this time um, helped him. You know, he, he helped Moses in the sense of helping the people to understand the vision um, that is before them. And, and, and one thing about it, I might be reading a little bit into the text, but this sticks with me. Jethro is suggestion that Moses instruct the people as a whole, amen, so that they can understand God's expectation. And it seems though Moses is waiting for the problem to arise before sharing insights from God. Jethro is basically saying, do it up front. Let everybody know what they need to know, and that way they're able to be able to respond to the things that are happening. And we, too, need to help people to see where we are headed. Amen. In your own respective leadership roles, you need to be able to help people to see what they need to know. So all of the responsibility, all of the things that take place don't really rest on you. But when the latter, when the big things come up, at least you can help in handling those things. Amen. The more, the more we can instruct individuals up front, the better off they'll be. Um, and then the next thing that um, I see in this is talking about building a team. And Jethro makes it clear to Moses that it's not all about him and he must build a team. Uh, Jethro suggests to Moses uh, that he needed to have leaders and that they needed to be responsible for leading. In fact, he suggests that the team must not only help Moses, but also mentor, mentor um, others to be leaders. Jethro understood the importance of developing a leadership team and, and, and knows the best way to do this is to create a leadership pipeline, a process of being mentored and mentoring at the same time. Building a strong team not only helps to address the current needs, but it sets the stage for the strong future. 
whether you realize it or not, everybody that is on this call right now has, has been a part of a mentoring process. Amen. You've been a part of being a mentor and uh, being mentored, and you also have grown to the point of mentoring others. And being a part of Declare Victory has helped many of you as leaders, amen, in your own spaces. And so this is a great blessing to be able to know that you have a space in which you can glean from and, and be able to move forward and teach others. Um, another thing that I see here is also that we have what um, is taking place is that you need to learn how to trust the team. Um, Jethro makes it clear to Moses that it's not just enough to build the team, but Moses have to give them uh, appropriate responsibilities. Um, Jethro uh, suggests that the team hears the issues first and resolve those that are less complicated, allowing Moses to focus on the critical issues and not wear himself out. Amen. So when we build a team, we must trust the team to do the work. Um, it is finding that that right balance of being involved and not so involved that the individual feels disempowered. In other words, don't micromanage. Um, if we choose the right people for the team, and then we must trust them to do the work. Like Moses, we must discover that it will make lives, our lives much easier. And lastly, and lastly, um, listen to good advice. Uh, one of the key lines in this text is Moses listened to his father-in-law. Amen. He listened to him. And although what Moses was doing uh, was working, he still listened to his father-in-law because there was room for improvement. Um, I remember many years ago, um, I had a supervisor, and, and this particular supervisor had supervised me for a while. Um, it, it had been about maybe, I, I want to say roughly about 12 or 13 years that I was under his leadership, and, and this one particular day, we was having some casual conversation at work, and, and he was just going on boasting and boasting and boasting about some things, and, and I made a statement that, that really rubbed him the wrong way, and, and, the, and st the statement was, everybody has room for improvement. And and in this, you know, he got upset with me that day. And, you know, act really funny for the next couple of days. But but I truly believe that in the midst of all that we do, everybody has room for improvement. And we all should be able to listen to good instructions. We all should be able to listen to good advice. And and one thing about it, it's important for, for leaders, it's important for those who instruct others to be able to listen as well. Um, this is especially true. And it seems like when everything is going well, we, we don't need advice. But we are prone to listen a lot of times when things are, are not going good. The challenge is to listen even when things are going right. Listening does not automatically mean changing course, but it can make us aware that we need to be mindful of what is ahead. We must learn to listen in the good as well as in the challenging times. Don't wait till it get bad to be able to listen to good instruction. And so with the five things that I threw out to you just, just a moment ago, um, we must remember, first of all, that it's not about us. Um, and secondly, that we need to learn to be able to instruct others. Um, thirdly, we need to be able to build a team around us or build a team that can move forward to do the work at hand in your respective places. Um, and next, we need to learn how to trust the team and not to uh, micromanage, not to try to do things yourself when you've given somebody else the responsibility to do it. And thirdly, we need to always be willing to listen to good advice, listen to the words that are being shared um, with us. So once again, wisdom teaches, but it only teaches if we let it. Many of us, regardless of who we are in our lives, can do more than we can ever imagine if we allow the influence of wisdom to speak to us from the places in which it may come. Sometimes wisdom may come in areas where you least expect it, but we need to be wise enough to receive the wisdom when it comes. So today I say to you, allow wisdom to teach you. Be teachable. Uh, be open, be willing to share what you've learned, and for this, and for this, um, be, this is a wonderful way to live. 
And always remember the words of James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all without fault, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So this is the word for today, and very short, very simple, um, that we must be able to allow wisdom to teach us. And I know that many of us have been on the call throughout the month, and you have heard many things being shared time and time and time again, and I hope that the words that we hear are not so redundant, um, that we hear it over and over and over, but there's some things that you're going to hear over and over uh, because it's just going to overlap. So allow the word of the Lord to speak to us, allow people in our lives to speak to us in order that we might grow, in order that we might go forward and do the things that need to be done. And just lastly, but not leastly, remember these words that come from the book of um, Exodus 18. And when, when he asked the question, what are you doing? Um, it goes on to say that Moses in the 24th uh, verse, so Moses heeded to the voice of his father-in-law, and he did all that he said. He heeded, and he did all that he said. So if any of you lack wisdom, guess what? Let them ask of God. And so this is the blessing of the word for today. So God bless each and every one of you. Um, as we go forward in our call today, we want to come back and recircle once again um, to invite those that have not had the opportunity to give greetings uh, to come forward and say hello to us this morning to let you know, let us know that you're on the call with us today. Amen. So this being Friday and this being uh, Men's Day, um, we want to give opportunity for the men first to come and just to say hello. I'm on with you. I'm with you today. Um, so if there's any men on the call today, may you please come on and just say hello, you're with us. Good morning, it's Genesis. Hey, man, good, mo good morning, good morning. Hey, good morning, family. Cedric's on the call. Hey, man, hey, man. Good to hear your voice this morning. Hey, man, got any other brothers on the line? Amen. Amen. So anyway, as with time keeps moving forward, there might be some new voices that we were here today. Are there any first time callers this morning? Are there anyone that's here for the first time want to greet us just by saying hello in your own way? Amen. It might be somebody that's been off the call for a long time, and we just want to give you the opportunity to come back and greet us again. Say hello. You're welcome back. Amen. Anybody? Uh, now, anybody now can come on and just say hello um, and let us know that you're on the call this morning. Good morning. This is Camille. God Amen. bless. Good morning. Hey, God bless you, Camille. Good morning. This is Juanita. Great declaration. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Juanita. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Foxy. Great good declaration, sir. Good morning. Hey, good morning. God bless you this morning. Amen. We have anyone else on this morning? I know there may be some to be like me, you know, being at work or being in the midst of noise and not able to come on this morning um, just because of that. And I know I was always working in a loud environment. Amen. But if there's anyone else that can uh, and that wants to come on, you can come on and say hello this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I know there's some days, you know, you have more people on than others, and um, I'm just truly thankful for those that were able to get up this morning with the excitement of being on the call. Um, it's just truly a blessing, you know, to come on and hear the voices, the very familiar voices that 
come on time and time again. Um, at this time, you know, we really just want to open up, you know, if there's anyone that, that would like to make any comments or even add to um, what has been shared. It was a very simple lesson, but then also within that lesson, um, there was so much more um, that could have been shared, but just in the interest of time and allowing others um, to be able to comment as well. I just want to give opportunity for that. So whoever wants to come in and share the day and this is your opportunity, come on. Good morning and happy Friday, Brother Marv. That was good. Yeah, good morning. It, it was like, it, you know, you gave that pow, like old school Batman and Robin when they jumped on the scene and start, and all you heard was the music, pow, tune, put. That was good. That was right <laughs> on point. It was short and, and it hit hard. Um, and I was thinking as you were, um, you know, given the declaration, I thought about, you know, how oftentimes when we get a job or we go in and we read the manual and we read all the policies and whatnot, but there's always a revision date at the bottom. It is revised constantly over and over again. And it's revised because there, new things arise and, and there's new way of doing things. I love the fact that um, you know, Jethro, you know, stood to the side and observed, but he was, he, he told him straight up, you wearing yourself out, man. What is you doing trying to do everything and how often we try to do everything. And I could look at myself and think about that, trying to, you know, keep up a household for years and years. And as the kids get older, there are some things that you got to just let go. And then I look at the, <laughs> the things, you know, cause we be mad. You can't clean up your room. You can't cook. You can't wash. You can't do nothing. You can't help and put your, but then I, I, the Lord just showed me the other day, my daughter, uh, my middle daughter, I have three um, daughters and she's the middle one. And I, she cooked dinner the other night and she cooked a dinner and it was so delicious. I mean, she took the time to like clean her meat and make sure everything was clean and, and it was seasoned well. And the porch, it was really good. It just, I said, you know what? I thank God that not only you are cooking, but you are cooking some things better than me. Sometimes I got to get on out the way and be like, girl, what are we having for dinner tonight? What you cooking? Not only did she cook, but she cleaned up. So those are the things that, you know, we have to understand that, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a sorry, I'm a hard taskmaster in my house. Yes, I am. Uh-huh. Husband, kids, cats, dogs, everything. Some stuff just has to be done. But then sometimes you have to step back and allow them to do what they need to do. If you taught them well, then they should be able to pick up the baton and do the stuff repetitively. Um, do it. Not, not the mindset, but once you get it in your mind, then you continue to do it and do it to the best of your ability. So that was great, Cher. I It just it hit so many points like the ping pong ball, but it was good. It was good. Thank you, Brother Mar, for pressing in and just giving that simple but powerful declaration this morning. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your share. Thank you for your share. You're the hard taskmaster. Amen. Amen. Hey, Pastor Amen. Mar. Hello. Good Hello. morning. It's Dee Dee. I'm jumping behind my sister, Shell. You said so much, but I really keyed in when you talked about your, I say bonus dad, when, you know, he, you guys, he, you didn't want to listen to the OG, right? <laughs> it reminded me of my grandmother. Oh, no. My grandmother used to say, you have to, like, older don't always make you wiser, but if you pay attention, because if I've been on this earth 50 more years longer than you, then I've experienced some things, so just listen. But we're hard-headed. So like you said, the damage had already been done because we want to go our own way. And so I appreciate you sharing that and also how you said that it's not about us and we make everything about us even being taskmasters you know even thinking we got to tell everybody how to do things and how to do things the way we think they should be done my mother is 82 years old and she knows i talk about her on the call because it's her way or it's wrong and i told her the other day i said mom just because that's the way you think it should be everybody don't think like that so wisdom is saying well, maybe there's another way to do it. And then not having a, a negative opinion when somebody don't, you know, do things the way you want it done. <clears throat> and then with technology being the way that it is, it's not just affecting elderly people. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? And then you don't want to slow down, use wisdom to ask how to do something, if that makes sense. Except, you know, just stop trying to be so controlling and, and being taskmasters. And like you said, even when you use the analogy with your boss, telling you to close all the laundry rooms, 
he didn't tell you to do it. He just told you to get it done. So I appreciate that. We got to listen. We got to listen so that we're doing things the right way and not just, you know, thinking we're on assignment and we're not. Love you, brother. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hey, good share. Good share. Anyone else like to come in today? Hey, Brother Miles. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Hey, Christina Joy. I just want to say this was an amazing share. I absolutely love how you said that you cannot do it alone. Um, oh, and how Moses had to learn from that. And um, it is something that uh, I'll just speak for myself that I've struggled with in times past because of being, you know, a single mom and having to do the household things alone, that kind of bled into the way I lead where I think I have to do everything by myself. So it is a teachable moment to learn to delegate. And I've been told this before, learn how to delegate, not dictate, but delegate and then trust that they'll get it done. So thank you for that reminder through the word of God. Amen. Amen. And, you know, on that same note, too, um, before someone else comes, um, you know, a lot of times some of us are natural delegators. And I mean, when I say natural delegators, some of us have the ability to always, you know, bring people on the team, bring people on board and just say, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? But then you have some of us who are just naturally prone to doing things ourselves. And we'll do so much ourselves that we're tired and we didn't already, we're messing up the program uh, because we didn't include others or we could have done more had we include someone else. And, and I just want to make this suggestion too, for those of you that have maybe a team or you have people that you work with, sometimes you just need to be honest enough with them to say, you know what, I have a hard time you know, delegate, or I have a hard time asking people to do things. But considering that we're all on the same team, let us all be able to help each other. And, and, and come to me when you see something that you can do. Amen. And so as you go forward, um, this may not always be the best way, but just knowing that, you know, being honest with people sometimes can go a long way. Amen. Amen. Because I know I'm one of those individuals myself. You know, I, I'm, I have a hard time always looking around asking other people to do stuff. But that's what we have, must learn how to do. We must learn how to do it and, and take example from Jethro and, and do everything um, that he said. Amen. So God bless you um, for sharing as well. And so if anyone else want to share. Hi. Good morning. This is History Vine. I like to do a declaration. Amen. And, you know, but like, uh, for me, it's like, because uh, I live by myself, but my granddaughters and them, they come over and stuff, right? And uh-huh. they don't mind doing anything, but I'm I'm the type of person, if they can't do it my way, it's not the right way. And, you know, I have learned, you know, in the last two months is that I just sit back, I ask them to do it, you know, and they get up and do it. And then I just leave it like that because, like how you said, sometimes I get tired even though I'm a single person, right, and I live by Mm -hmm. myself, and I like my stuff decent and in order. And they don't have the ability like I have to do it like I do it. So I appreciate the way that they do do it because they do do it, you know. So, yeah, sometimes I have to, like, back up. And let them like do it their way, you know. Even if they leave, I probably sneak and do a little more, you know. But anyway, I liked it that that was real good. And I had wanted to ask you a question too. What was your opening scripture? You just said Proverbs. You never did say the chapter. I never did say the chapter. Um, no for opening scripture. Well, I mean, I used a few scriptures. Uh, one of them uh, was Proverbs uh, twelve and fifteen. Uh, okay, the way you know, of the pool is right in You know, when it, when you first, after you do the deck, uh, the uh, greeting, not the greeting, you know, you tell everybody, you say, this is today's scripture. Okay, well, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Okay. I didn't start out, I didn't start out preaching with a text today. Okay, okay, but Amen. I got all Amen. the other scriptures. Okay, thank you. Amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you too. You know that's really funny because you know all of automatically a lot of times we 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 um 
I ain't going to use the term assume, but, you know, there's an expectation sometimes that things are done a certain way. And it's not always that way. We don't always lead out with a scripture. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. Amen. So if there's anyone else um, that's online that'd like to come on and share today. She was talking Hi, about CK when he read the scripture. He didn't give us the address. He just said Proverbs. She was asking. He did. Marv came out with Proverbs, but um, the yeah, no, he didn't come out with. He uh, came out with Proverbs too, but he didn't give us a, a scripture. He just said Proverbs. He didn't say. Yeah, she was only you asking I mean? about Marv when he came out the gate with talking about Proverbs. But I'll give. I'll tell you what. Um, Ek's was. Give me one second. Uh-huh. Thank you, baby. Amen. So um, you, uh, maybe I'm missing something. I did mention something about Proverbs when I first started out. Um, you just talked about the book. You said you were going to be coming from Proverbs, but EK's opening scripture was okay. Proverbs 3 and 13. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. Do we have anyone else um, that want to share this morning? Excellent declaration, Mark. Amen. God bless you. And who was whose voice was that? Miss B. <laughs> you know me as Barbara Cockrell. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good to hear your voice this morning. And I believe it's all the way from Good Texas. Morning. Actually, I'm in California right now. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right now. All right. <laughs> Amen. Did I hear another voice? Um. Did I hear someone else trying to say something? Yeah, it was Krishanda. Good morning. God bless you. Good oh, morning. You know funny I hear someone else. I'm not sure. Um. A uh, great, great declaration. And there was a lady that she spoke a couple of minutes ago. Uh, What I could appreciate about what you were saying is uh, really keeping a teachable spirit um, in uh, leadership. I guess just in general, we because we're all one body and we come with different gifts, right? It's almost Uh like having really sharp, um, special um, instruments or special weapons or whatever it is, the special gifts that you're bringing to a team. So if you don't listen, you might miss out on being able to have to take something to another level, like you said, a different perspective. And so being open and really being able to see what you have around you and listening um, just to uh, evolve and to grow, um, I think was just so great in what you were saying, because, um, you know, things sometimes you, we, we, things are evolving so much that we need to really be listening and, and really leverage um, the people that are around us and the gifts um, that that God has given to, to to us all because we don't have all the answers and if we are not open then we can miss out from some information that someone might be able to share us to keep us from dying to keep us from failing so many things so God bless you man of God God bless you Great thanks one. for sharing thanks for sharing amen Amen. Do we have anyone else that would like to come on this morning? Amen. Blessing is that there are always going to be teachable moments in each and every one of our lives. And the biggest thing is just, uh, will we be willing to accept it? And also, if we flip the script, um, we're all going to be teaching. Um, in some moments of our lives. And, 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 and I like to kind of drop this in the spirit. I don't know who may need to hear this, but sometimes when we're dealing with our children um, and we're sharing, we're sharing, and it seems like we're just speaking to a, speaking to a wall, a brick wall. But one thing to be mindful of, what you share with them, be mindful that it, it may not register in the moment, uh, but eventually they'll get it. It may not register in the moment, 
but eventually they'll get it. Amen. Uh, train up a child in the way that they should go. Amen. Amen. They may not get it in the moment, but eventually they'll get it. Amen. Someone else ready to come on? I hear some noise in the background. Amen. This is Sister Yvonne again. I like that, that gold nugget you just dropped. They may not get it in the moment, but eventually they'll get it. I like that. Amen. That's Amen. Just, yeah, this is a thought for me. You know, because you know, sometimes I can react or I have reacted that why you do it, you know, that way right then and there. And then I had to sit back and I had to analyze myself. Well, they doing it, but they not doing it in the timely frame that I think they should do it, you know. Amen. So we you can't put so much pressure on them, you know, on, on them. So thank you for that. I needed to hear that. Yeah, because I have did that before. So I thank God for this decoration on today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming back in. You know, sometimes we just need to go back and reflect on our own lives because we were that way. And it took a moment. You know, I, I used the term uh, my stepdad, and usually I'm not one to use the step. And um, it was brought up bonus dad. Um, but one of the things that, you know, I learned, you know, just looking back and, and seeing all the mistakes that I've made because I didn't listen. Uh, because I wasn't willing to allow those teachable moments in my life because I thought I knew what I needed to do and I thought I knew where I was going. I thought I had it made. So, But, you know, we have to just learn to be able to allow teachable moments um, to take place in our lives. And just as we've made some mistakes, our children and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, that's what, they're going to make some mistakes too. But we have to be there to still be able to teach. Amen. Amen. So there might be someone else that want to come on, and you might want to uh, come back on. Amen. To share something. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I think that's where, um, in dealing with this month, that is the idea and the person of wisdom is knowing that the things is knowing not just how, not knowing to teach but how to teach um, and being a, being a teacher. Sometimes um, I know classrooms are different now. Classrooms are, um, it's, 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 it's a scripted show, meaning uh, the teacher gives it, has the script. They have to go by the script. If you don't get what the script says, you're <laughs> out of line or out of luck. Um, but in old school, what they if you didn't get it and the whole class if part of the class got it then we had to teach a certain way um that's where we understood the different learning styles of individuals um, so wisdom looks at the situation and says i see that this person may not be grasping what i'm giving or what's being put out like this so wisdom causes you to ask god for wisdom if you lack it, ask him and he give it to you freely. But he, he asks, it will teach you to ask God for wisdom to better the situation. And even with dealing with Moses and Jethro, I can imagine Jethro probably watched Moses for a long time before he said anything. Because that, that was a whole bunch of people. That was a bunch of people. And I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, especially with leadership, if you see 10 people, that's 25 different personalities just in 10 people. So you got to yeah. figure out how to deal and, and maneuver with each one of those personalities. And the wisdom part that Jethro did, I can imagine he kind of sat back and, and watched Moses' day-to-day -day life, which meant he didn't, he didn't have a specific time for what he was doing, that he didn't have – a family life, he, even though he had family, that he he had poured out so much that it was depleting him. And it was where he would say, hey, listen, this is how you need to do this. This is a suggestion. <laughs> so I believe hey, um, going forward that we, we have to remember that it is plain written in Scripture that if you lack wisdom, ask God for it. And I think we, we think that's so, so far away, but it's a simple question. Open up your mouth and be like, God, 
how do I do this? How do I do this with with wisdom? How do I do this with you in mind and not me being depleted completely? Amen. 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 You're not done, are you? Amen. I guess you already got off. Amen. You should have just came on and tag team with me this morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mic dropper right there, Elder. And, yeah. and you, that you think about it, and as he said that he Jethro was probably well out watching him. And then with uh, being that he was the father and a bonus dad, father in love, uh, the stepdad, the, it was his daughter. His daughter was married. So she, he, she was probably complaining to him like, hey, something has to be done. Well, a lot of times we stood aside and watching it and it works our nerves that somebody is killing themselves, trying to make something come together when the people really don't appreciate it and they want it to work their way. So that, that was good, Jonathan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that was a blessing. That's a blessing. You know, that, that's the good thing about us putting all our minds together, being able to work together. Um, and you're going to hear so many different perspectives and different things from different ones. Amen. Well, there's somebody else ready to come on? Amen. Was there anybody else that would like to share? We want to give you the opportunity this morning. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Amen. Amen. So if we really don't have anyone else that, that wants to come in and, and chime this morning. You know, we're just truly blessed that we're all here on this Good Friday. Um, going forth in this day, um, allow the Lord to give you teachable moments and allow you also to have teachable moments for others. And just be mindful that we're all a part of a process um, that's taking place. And so we truly love each and every one of you who are on the call. And we just truly thank God for each and every person. And I pray that, you know, the Lord would just continue to bless you in all of your endeavors as you go forward in this day. Amen. So, Father God, we just truly love you today. We just truly thank you. Um, we thank you for this space. We thank you for allowing us to be in a space of, which allows for teachable moments um, where we're able to share and teach with one another. Um, but even more so, God, the things that we learn and the things that we develop in um, on this call allow us the space of, of going somewhere else and being able to utilize it as well. Um, so that someone else may be blessed, someone else may be encouraged, someone else may be taught. And there may be people here who have much more wisdom than others, much more knowledge than others, but it's okay because we're helping each other. We're a team growing together. And so in this moment, Father God, we just pray that you would just continue to be with us and allow your Holy Spirit um, just to continue to guide us and lead us um, in our, our continual day endeavors. And we just forever give you all praise. We forever give you all the glory because you truly are worthy of it. And we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So God bless each and every one of you today. Enjoy your Friday. And let us delegate our wisdom. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. God bless everybody. You guys have a blessed weekend. Have a good one.